Ezekiel chapter 30. I think it's remarkable how things happen by God. I don't believe things happen <clears throat> you know, out of chance, out of a whim, but the word of the Lord came on and the word of the Lord came again unto me saying Son of man prophecy and say Thus saith the Lord God How You know that's what the wolves do It's a woman in travail will howl. Whoa! And I, when I went to school for the ministry, there was a man that said that I forget who said it, a famous uh, preacher. He said, "When God says whoa, you better stop." That's what you tell a horse. Whoa! Whoa! Worth the day. A valuable day. A valuable day. What's that? The day that Jesus was born? The day of your wedding? The day of your graduation? The day of your promotion? Whoa. For the day is near. Christmas is tomorrow. Even the day of the Lord is near. That's the second advent. I mean, here we are, the day before Christmas, and our study of the Bible, we're at the second advent of Jesus Christ. How convenient, Lord. And notice it says, woe be the day. I had a family member, they're saved. They're in glory now. And she was always saying, I can't wait to, I can't wait to the Lord's return. And her aspect was this. Jesus Christ coming back on the horse, and I had to teach her. And when you go to Amos, chapter 5, verse 18, it says, Woe be the day. It's a day of darkness and a day of clouds. And it says, A cloudy day. <clears throat> now, the church will not be looking for this day. The church will be coming behind Jesus, Joel chapter 2, when Jesus Christ comes back, Revelation 19. In Revelation 19, when Jesus mounts on his horse and giddy ups and comes, the second advent, and Joel chapter 2 says the church is behind him. If you have not been a favor to Israel, a blessing to Israel, you better watch out because you better watch out, you better not pout. I'm telling you why Jesus Christ is coming on horseback. Never mind Satan Claus. He knows if you've been good. He knows if you've been bad. So you better be good to Israel's sake. Because anybody through the seven years of tribulation period curse did not take care of that Jew. They will be trampled and the blood of the enemies of Christ will be on his garments. And you'll be cast into hell. Well worth the day. You say, well, what about, what, what about if, I, if, if, if we helped the Jews? What about we took care of the Jews? <clears throat> you visited me while I was in prison. You took care of me while I was sick. You, you hid me. and, and you, Lord, when, when do we take care of you? Lord, when, when do we feed you? Lord, when do we, we heal you? When, when you did it unto the least of mine, you did it unto me. They don't even know. How's that for a salvation? They don't even know. And then blessing Israel gets to go into millennium with Jesus, with the church, with the Jews. But if you are an enemy of God, oh, what is the day? Ain't the day you're looking for. The Bible says the sun and the moon and all that will darken. They'll take their idols and their images and age of worship, cast them to the, to the moles and the bat. And they'll say, rocks, fall on us. Because here comes the rock. I ain't taking about Boba. I'm not taking about that. I don't even know who that guy is, the rock. That rock will bend down before my rock if he doesn't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know if the guy's an actor or whatever. I don't know what he does. I know somebody out there says they're the rock. All right, their rock is not my rock. 
for me, the, the, the second advent, hey, I'm behind Jesus all the way. And for the worlds and enemies of Israel and enemies of God, you better watch out. You better watch out. You better not pout. Oh, that's a good that's a good second advent carol to sing on December 24th. It shall be the time of the heathen. You see, Jacob's trouble is seven years. When Jesus Christ comes back, he's going to deal with the nations. The nations get their, get their, the nations that help Israel, the nations that curse Israel. It goes all the way back to, to Genesis chapter 12. I will curse them that curse you, and I will bless them that bless you, Abraham, and your seed. And the sword shall come upon Egypt. Here we go with Egypt again. And great pain shall be in Ethiopia. When the slain shall fall in Egypt. And they shall take away her multitude. But Egypt getting their butt kicked all the time in the scriptures. And her foundation shall be broken down. All those images and idols and the, and the sphinx and the and the pyramids and the, what's those gods over there? They had to move because of that river and the dam. Ethiopia, Libya, and Lydia, and all the mingled people, mixed races, and chub. I guess if you lived in chub, they call you chubby. <laughs> And the men of the land that is a league, league of nations, shall fall with them by the sword. So these people are going to come in and help Egypt, and they're going to be, thus save the Lord. And the Lord says it's going to happen. Now I read some commentaries that they said this is one of the times of the kings of, of Judah. It could be. But we're also looking at sex. Remember, just because it's already happened doesn't mean it's going to happen again because all the plagues of, of Egypt are coming back. If you study your Bible. And the pride of her power. There's a pride. A sin. America's in great pride. England. Oh, the sun never, never set on the English Empire. It does now. Japan, we're the, we're the nation of the rising sun. <laughs> no, you're not. Not anymore. Her power shall come down, as with America. I'm sorry, I, I don't go with this natural re revivalism and all that. Not when the church are in heathen practices. Not when the church is allowing sodomites. I'm talking about churches in all the religions. And when we're going to look at the, 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 the Christians that are born again and the activities and what they're doing in the name of Jesus because they like it, because they're entertained with it, and they're going with the flow, you're not going to have no revival. You're going to have an individual re revival, maybe a family revival, not a nation revival. Shall come down. With the tower, Sini, Sini, shall they fall in it by the sword, saith the Lord. And they shall be desolate in the midst of the country that are desolate. So multiple. And the city shall be in the midst of the cities that are wasted. So, not good news. And we're, this is... This right now, what we're looking at is when, when Nebuchadnezzar comes in, Babylon comes in. And I think this is at the time when they kidnapped Jeremiah and Baruch and took them down into Egypt. God told them to take those stones and bury it in the, the, build, the brick kiln because I'm going to send Nebuchadnezzar and the Chaldean and we're going to get them. I think. I could be wrong. At this point right now, if I'm right, Jeremiah is still alive and Jeremiah witnesses the destruction of Judah and Jerusalem, and watches the destruction of Egypt, uh, of Egypt, of Egypt that Ezekiel's written about. And you're going to see between Jeremiah and Ezekiel, they keep crossing each other. I don't know how much they know about each other. You know, Jeremiah never mentioned Ezekiel. 
I don't think Ezekiel mentions Jeremiah. Jeremiah is in Jerusalem preaching. Ezekiel is in uh, Babylon preaching. And there's one time that, I don't know if everybody knew it, but Ezekiel went to the temple. And that day shall messengers go forth from me in ships to make careless Egyptian Ethiopians afraid. And great pain shall come upon them as in the day of Egypt. For lo, it cometh. That's sad. Not good report. That's not the good news. For thus saith the Lord. No, it's not can say. For thus saith the Lord. I miss verse 8, and they shall know that I am the Lord when I have set a fire in Egypt. That's one way to know that God's God. There's a fire in Egypt, and there's dead bodies. And when all her helpers shall be destroyed. So everybody coming to help Egypt. In verse 10, thus saith the Lord, I will make the multitude of Egypt to cease by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of... So we're back in Ezekiel and Jeremiah's time. But Egypt will also be charged and judged in the time of the Lord. We'll see in a moment. He and his people with him, the terrible of the nation, shall be brought to destroy the land. They shall draw their swords against Egypt and fill the land with the slain. I said, I wonder if this is during Jeremiah. I will make the rivers dry. I don't think that happened during Nebuchadnezzar's time. But there was a time that the waters turned to blood. There's a time that all, that all the waters would be turned to blood. Now watch, and sell the land into the hand of the wicked. That's the Antichrist. There is coming a time in the tribulation period that the Nile River will go dry. And the land will be sold, Egypt, to the Antichrist. And I will, I will, God will make the land waste. A dump. I mean, that's what they call a, a, a waste. City dump is called a waste. And all that's therein by the hand of strangers, non Egyptians. I, the Lord, have spoken it. It's going to happen. Thus saith the Lord God, I will lift up the idols and call them aids to worship. As you put up your Christmas tree and your Easter egg, I won't know. No, 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 no. That tree's an idol. You got to water it. You got to decorate it. And you bow down Christmas morning to get all the presents. And you don't talk about the present of. Come on, really? With all that glamour and all the gifts, you're going to talk about Jesus? Really? You can't tell people about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You think they're going to sit around with your family and talk about Jesus at that tree? Really? And when was the last time you told somebody in your family about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? I can tell you, as far as I believe, in one way or another, I have witnessed to all my family that I knew that were not saved. I didn't witness to my grandparents because they were saved. I don't think there's one family member that I came in contact with I did not tell them about Jesus. Some way or somehow. I'm not bragging. I could, I, could, I could have missed somebody. I will cause their images, idols and images, You've seen those idols and images. It's the Sphinx. 
It's their emblems, and I don't even know what they're called and all that. It's the pyramids. It's the Egyptian hieroglyphics. It's the museum. Oh, no. And there shall be no more prints. Didn't Disney do a, land, do a movie about the prince of Egypt? And try to make it Christian? Somebody did a movie. I think it was Lions or something. I don't know. I don't care about that crap. The prince of the land of Egypt. I will put a fear in the land of Egypt. Anxiety. Man, that's one. Listen, I've had fears like that. That just works on you. You don't know where to go. You don't know what to do. You don't have no idea. That's torture in itself. I will make Pathros desolate. I will set a fire in zone. I will execute judgments in no. Now that no is not no, I'm not going to do it. That's a city called no. Hey, can you imagine? You're on a phone and you're ordering something. Yeah, okay, so, yeah, I live at 432 Central Avenue. And what city? No. Well, i got to know what city. No. Will you tell me what city? No. I will pour out my fury on sin. Now, that's not sin as in adultery, lying, stealing, all that. That's a town named sin. And no and sin, get it? No sin. Those were the chief gods of those cities. Like you'll see in, in even in Judah, there's some towns called Baal and then something else. That's a city given to Baal. There's actually a, a city in the Old Testament named Asterisk. You know her as Esther, the queen of heaven, Diana. These are two gods, no and sin. Can you imagine having a god called sin? And is it Paul that says go? No, Jesus said, go and sin no more. <laughs> That's a mouthful. From the cross references. The strength of Egypt. The strength of Egypt is sin. That's that's very particular. And I will cut off the, the multitudes of no. I will set a fire in Egypt. Again, there's that fire. Sin shall have great pain. You know, that's how Jeremiah described Judah. Woman in travail. Listen, if Judah and Israel north suffered for their sins, America, England, Japan, Russia, China are going to suffer for their sins. If not, God's going to have to apologize to everybody in hell or in Israel and we're in Judah, the time of Jeremiah. God ain't going to apologize because they sinned against God. It's not if America is going to fall, it's when it's going to fall. She has sinned against God. We got a president today that will say, okay, abortion is, is wrong. And the violence of his Catholic Church. And then he'll turn around and give out stimulus money to families with child credit. Wait a minute. You can kill the babies, but they will give you money for having children. And we'll give very little money to those on Social Security and those... <laughs> Or, you know, you live in a backwards world. No shall be rent asunder, and no shall have distress. Distress is daily. That is not good. The young men of Avon and Pi Bish shall fall by the sword. War. And these sh cities shall go into captivity. You know what the worst thing that God could do to American and Americans? Have us conquered. And our weak jellyfish, I'm offended people, are taken captive by China, the Muslims. 
fierce nations. You imagine the wimpy Americans trying to survive with Chinese overlords or Russians. At Tavepanes, also the day shall be darkened. That's interesting. Just in time, Anthony, there was a period in time in Egypt there there was darkness and there was light for Israel. When I shall break there the yokes of Egypt. That's a that's a yoke instrument putting oxen in to plow the field. And the pomp, you know, the, the uppity up, you know, the yeah. The, the big limousine for the president and the secret service holding the vehicle running down the street and all the people ah, and the bands ooh, that's the pomp of her strength shall cease in her as for her Tanaphanes a cloud shall cover her that's second advent that's the end of the tribulation period and that's second advent darkness and then a cloud he cometh with clouds Look at Amos chapter 5. And this is a verse I end up showing my, my family. They thought it was good looking for the second advent. And it's like, no, no, we're looking for the... And then people get the second advent and the rapture mixed up. And if you really look at it, it can be confusing. And I'm in the wrong version. But you got you got to take the rapture is not the second advent. The second advent is not the rapture. There are two different things. Jesus comes to the, in the sky, and Jesus comes to the earth. He says, "Whoa!" Imagine Ezekiel, unto you that desire the day of the Lord. What end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Now, why? If a man did flee from a lion, your adversary, the devil. And a bear met him, and the Antichrist. There's a, there's the tribulation period right there. The day of the Lord's the second advent. That's not what the Christians waiting for. Where we were. Okay, bye. So time is is going to be darkened, and then there's going to be a cloud. And her daughter shall go into captivity. Thus will I execute judgments in Egypt. And they shall know that I am the Lord. You know, it's kind of weird. Take that verse right there in Exodus 30, verse 19. Run that back to Exodus. I don't mean don't go to Ex the Exodus story. Let's take the final... Judgment in Egypt. Okay? The death of the firstborn. Did Pharaoh know that God was God? No. Did the Egyptian soldiers know that God was God? No. There were some Egyptians that went out with the Israelites, but not all. At Ezekiel 30 verse 19, we're coming to the time where, okay, now you're going to know this. There's only one possible way that Pharaoh knows that God is God. He's burning in hell with his soul. Can you imagine drowning in a Red Sea and waking up in, in, a, in a lake of fire? Well, in a, it happened all, I don't know what year it was, but how many years has Pharaoh and his army been in hell today and thinking? Oh, damn. Moses was right. Guess what? Too late. Oh, that one family member, he kept telling me about Jesus. He kept telling me about the gospel. He kept telling me that, that my religion is wrong. And they die and up and end up in hell. And how long they're in hell? It's like, oh, they were right. We preach it. We preach on the streets of the farmers' run. I go there and I preach every. Jesus said, "The heaven, 
Hell, your religion's wrong. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And they don't, they hate me and they, they hate it and they reject it and they go and die in hell. And how long they're in hell is they? That street preacher was right. The Bible was right. I know there's no Abraham, so I don't know who they're talking to or would think. God, will you send somebody to my family? Will you tell that street preacher to go to my family? The one that hated you preaching wants you to go to his family. That's when you know God is Lord. When you are in hell, you are a Bible believer. When you are in hell, it's the King James, not the NIV. When you finally realize that mom or dad is right, that stove is hot when you touch it. It's too late. When everybody tries to warn you that that person you want to be your spouse, no, wrong, absolutely not. And then you marry, and then your life is ruined. <laughs> Divorce ain't going to finish. You're going to deal with it. I know a woman, well, I thought he was saved and all that, and after I got married to him, I thought, hey, you did it. You gotta watch out. I am the Lord. You shall know that I am the, that is a very, <laughs> I don't know what kind of to describe it. Because there are people in hell today that they were told about God, whatever dispensation they were, that Noah's preaching when he's building an ark, they no, it ain't gonna rain, Noah. You're a fool, you're an idiot, go away. And they died in the floods. Man, Noah's right. Imagine Cain. I don't know who the first person to die that ended up in hell. I know the first person that died was, was Abel. But the first person to die that went to hell, can you imagine? The longest person has been in hell, somebody was right. Maybe Enoch. Enoch preached. I got family that are in hell, probably going to go to hell. And right now, they're... Stiley was right. Well, how come that Christian in our family didn't tell me? That's a shame. How about all the Christians? We celebrate Christmas, but we don't talk about the gospel. I know, a couple more days, I'll be off Christmas. Easter will come up next. Son of man, now watch this one. You ready? You think I'm a fool? Okay. I'll wait for you guys to stop clapping at that one. The Son of Man, I have broken the arm of Pharaoh the king of Egypt. Do you know the cross reference on that one? Now, this has two aspects. Right now, we're talking about the arm of the armies. But this is the Antichrist. Pharaoh is a type of Antichrist, Sennacherib is a type of Antichrist. Uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, he's a type of devil, but then he gets right. The devil doesn't get right, so all types don't go all the way. The king of Tyre is a type of, of Satan. In a couple moments, Peter was a type of Satan. Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, <coughs> as Moses lifted up the serpent. Now, I'm going to stop right there, because I don't want to go any further. And lo, it shall not be bound up to be healed. The Antichrist gets the right eye and the right arm, but he gets healed. <laughs> so see, types don't go all the way. To put a roller to bind it. That must be some kind of medical thing they had back then. To make it strong to hold the sword. So he's going to get a broken arm and... He's not going to be able to hold that sword. And it's going to be his right arm if he's a righty. And he won't be able to hold his sword. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God. Behold, I am against Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. 
I want what God's saying about the presidents, plural, about America. Is there any presidents that God was pleased with and that their names are written down in the Lamb's Book of Life? I forget how many presidents we had. I don't care. I will break his arms, plural. And that which was broken, I will cause the sword to fall off of his hand. Now that could be a military strength, arms. The arm, verse 21, is he himself. He can't fight. 22, his army. What did God do to Pharaoh at the end of Exodus? He broke the wagon wheels. He broke the arms and they drowned. Pharaoh couldn't do anything but tread water for a while. And somebody said, hey, you know, the, the fish in the Red Sea need some food. Don't worry, I'll take care of it. I'll give you some good Egyptian food. And I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations. Like he did Israel. And it will disperse them um, through the country. I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon. I, I, I thought they were broken. And if they're broken, is something broken that man cannot take care of. Uh, there, there was a prayer request the other night from, from a, a, a Christian woman and a family member. Her, her, her relatives got all these aches and pains involved with the spine and, and blood and all that. And all the tests they're doing, the doctors don't know nothing. I got a God who knows something. I got a physician that knows something. I, he knows how to heal. We read in two verses, it's done. It can't be, no matter what you do, it ain't going to heal. And then we read God. And put my sword in his hand. But I will break Pharaoh's arms. The king of Babylon. It's going to get stronger. And Pharaoh is going to get weaker. And notice the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar and his army are going in the sword of God. Okay, Jehovah, we, you know, we can't join the military service because the Bible says thou shalt not kill. What on earth do you do with that verse? God's not even using his people. He's using the heathen to get the heathen in a way of what? War. God is ordaining in verse chapter 30, verse 21. God is ordaining war. Now, there are some things that the Jehovah Witnesses believe. I believe too. And listen, religion's got right things and they got wrong. Uh, not to go into military service, that's wrong. And if I ever say some things that they don't do, I believe you shouldn't do, and then people go, oh man, he's a jerk. So I'm not going to get into it. But the Jehovah Witnesses say, we don't fight, we don't go. There's God saying, my sword is going to be in your hand to go have a war. And he shall groan before him with the groanings of a deadly wounded man. That's the Antichrist. The king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, he's wrong. He, he's living in the world. He, he's against God. And you know he turns and gets right with God? I wonder how that's going to play out in, in the Jacob's trouble. Here's a man that's totally against God, totally against, and then maybe he gets right. <laughs> but I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon. That's God doing it. And the arms of Pharaoh shall fall down. If you have God on your side, you're going to have all you can do by the power of God. 
If you don't have God in your side, I don't care what you have. I don't care who you turn to. I don't care what your hope is. If it ain't in God, you are in trouble. They shall know that I am the Lord. There it is again. When I shall put my sword in the hand of King of Babylon and shall stretch it out upon the land of Egypt. When, when the Babylonian army and the Chaldean army shows up, how are they going to know it's the Lord? Maybe Jeremiah's preaching. We know he's preaching because God told him as he's kidnapped, taken down to Egypt. Can you imagine the Egyptians here in Jeremiah? Can you imagine, you know, we heard about this before, about those Israel. We need to get rid of them. Don't bring those Israelites down here because we get in trouble. Wasn't it Jericho? We heard what you did in Egypt. <laughs> what, what, what was that, that city that, that surrendered themselves to, to Joshua? We heard what you did in Egypt. <laughs> You would figure Egypt would get to the point when they hear Israel, oh, no, no, no. You figured they would put on the borderline, big sign, no Israelites. Turn and go back. No entry. If you are a Jew, you ain't welcome here. Your God ain't welcome here. Go home. You think, but they don't. Isn't that remarkable? All the plagues of Egypt in, in the book of Exodus, they allowed the Israelites to come back. That's America. We're a godly nation. And you've got the United Nations stationed in New York City where the United Nations are against the Jew. You will go against the Jew for the Arabian oil and gasoline. And you wonder why your gasoline is over $3 in Florida. And I heard it's much higher in California. Well, first of all, you had to turn coat against Israel for the Arabians. And how much of your gas money, your gas in gallons in the week, of all the stuff you do throughout the week, how much is it really for the Lord? You will travel across the country to see four ugly faces on a mountain that were never supposed to be there. Or this little puff of water come out of the ground. And then you'll skip out on church. You won't go to church. Uh-huh. Your grocery stores are, are empty. Well, how much money did you give give for the Lord? And how much money did you give to your dog and your kitty cat? Or your fish or your guana? Or ferrets. I don't even know if they have ferrets anymore. Ferrets used to be big when I grew up. No. We're losing in America what we don't give to God. I will scatter Egyptians among the nations, like he did with Israel, and disperse them among the... That's repeated twice. And they shall know that I am the Lord. When you see people deported, it's an interesting thing. 